Sir Francis Drake, Vice Admiral was an English sea captain, privateer, navigator, slaver, and politician of the Elizabethan era. Drake carried out the second circumnavigation of the world in a single expedition, from 1577 to 1580, and was the first to complete it as captain and leader of the expedition throughout the entire circumnavigation. Elizabeth I of England awarded Drake a knighthood in 1581. He was second in command of the English fleet against the Spanish Armada in 1588. He died of dysentery in January 1596 after unsuccessfully attacking San Juan, Puerto Rico. His exploits made him a hero to the English but a pirate to the Spaniards to whom he was known as El Drac. King Philip II was said to have offered a reward of 20,000 ducats, about £4 million by modern standards, for his life, birth and early years. Francis Drake was born in Tavistock, Devon, England. Although his birth is not formally recorded, it is known that he was born while the six articles were in force. Drake was two and twenty when he obtained the command of the Judith. This would date his birth to 1544. A date of c. 1540 is suggested from two portraits. One a miniature painted by Nicholas Hilliard in 1581 when he was allegedly 42, the other painted in 1594 when he was said to be 53. He was the eldest of the twelfth sons of Edmund Drake, a Protestant farmer, and his wife Mary Mileway. The first son was reportedly named after his godfather Francis Russell, second Earl of Bedford. Because of religious persecution during the Prayer Book Rebellion in 1549, the Drake family fled from Devonshire into Kent. There the father obtained an appointment to minister to men in the King's Navy. He was ordained deacon and made vicar of Upner Church on the Medway. Drake's father apprenticed Francis to his neighbor, the master of a bark used for coastal trade transporting merchandise to France. The shipmaster was so satisfied with the young Drake's conduct that, being unmarried and childless at his death, he bequeathed the bark to Drake, marriage and family. Francis Drake married Mary Newman in 1569. She died 12 years later, in 1581. In 1585, Drake married Elizabeth Sydenham, born circa 1562, the only child of Sir George Sydenham, of Coombe Sydenham, who was the High Sheriff of Somerset. After Drake's death, the widow Elizabeth eventually married Sir William Courtney of Powderham. As Sir Francis Drake had no children, his estate and titles passed on to his nephew. Sailing career At age 23, Drake made his first voyage to the Americas, sailing with his second cousin, Sir John Hawkins. On one of a fleet of ships owned by his relatives, the Hawkins family of Plymouth, in 1568 Drake was again with the Hawkins fleet when it was trapped by the Spaniards in the Mexican port of San Juan de Ulua. He escaped along with Hawkins. Following the defeat at San Juan de Ulua, Drake vowed revenge. He made two voyages to the West Indies, in 1570 and 1571, of which little is known. In 1572, he embarked on his first major independent enterprise. He planned an attack on the Isthmus of Panama, known to the Spanish as Tierra Firma and the English as the Spanish Main. This was the point at which the silver and gold treasure of Peru had to be landed and sent overland to the Caribbean Sea, where galleons from Spain would pick it up at the town of Nombre de Dios. Drake left Plymouth on 24 May 1572, with a crew of 73 men in two small vessels, the Pasha and the Swan, to capture Nombre de Dios. His first raid was late in July 1572. Drake and his men captured the town and its treasure. When his men noticed that Drake was bleeding profusely from a wound, they insisted on withdrawing to save his life and left the treasure. Drake stayed in the area for almost a year, raiding Spanish shipping and attempting to capture a treasure shipment. In 1573, he joined Guillaume Le Testu, a French buccaneer, in an attack on a richly laden mule train. Drake and his party found that they had captured around 20 tons of silver and gold. 
They buried much of the treasure, as it was too much for their party to carry. Wounded, Letesti was captured and later beheaded. The small band of adventurers dragged as much gold and silver as they could carry back across some 18 miles of jungle-covered mountains to where they had left the raiding boats. When they got to the coast, the boats were gone. Drake and his men, downhearted, exhausted and hungry, had nowhere to go and the Spanish were not far behind. At this point Drake rallied his men, buried the treasure on the beach, and built a raft to sail with two volunteers ten miles along the surf-lashed coast to where they had left the flagship. When Drake finally reached its deck, his men were alarmed at his bedraggled appearance. Fearing the worst, they asked him how the raid had gone. Drake could not resist a joke and teased him by looking downhearted. Then he laughed, pulled a necklace of Spanish gold from around his neck and said, Our voyage is made, lads, by the 9th of August 1573. He had returned to Plymouth, circumnavigation of the earth. With the success of the Panama Isthmus raid, in 1577 Elizabeth I of England sent Drake to start an expedition against the Spanish along the Pacific coast of the Americas. Drake used the plans that Sir Richard Grainville had received the patent for in 1574 from Elizabeth which was rescinded a year later after protests from Philip of Spain. He set out from Plymouth on 15 November 1577, but bad weather threatened him and his fleet. They were forced to take refuge in Falmouth, Cornwall, from where they returned to Plymouth for repair. After this major setback, he set sail again on 13 December, aboard Pelican, with four other ships and 164 men. He soon added a sixth ship, Mary, a Portuguese merchant ship that had been captured off the coast of Africa near the Cape Verde Islands. He also added its captain, Nuno da Silva, a man with considerable experience navigating in South American waters. Drake's fleet suffered great attrition. He scuttled both Christopher and the flyboat Swan due to loss of men on the Atlantic crossing. He made landfall at the gloomy Bay of San Julian in what is now Argentina. Ferdinand Magellan had called here half a century earlier, where he put to death some mutineers. Drake's men saw weathered and bleached skeletons on the grim Spanish gibbets. They discovered that Mary had rotting timbers, so they burned the ship. Following Magellan's example, Drake tried and executed his own mutineer, Thomas Doughty. Drake decided to remain the winter in San Julian before attempting the Strait of Magellan. Entering the Pacific the three remaining ships of his convoy departed for the Magellan Strait at the southern tip of South America. A few weeks later Drake made it to the Pacific, but violent storms destroyed one of the three ships, the Marigold in the Strait and caused another. The Elizabeth captained by John Winter to return to England, leaving only the Pelican. After this passage, the Pelican was pushed south and discovered an island which Drake called Elizabeth Island. Drake, like navigators before him, probably reached a latitude of 55 degrees south along the Chilean coast. Despite popular law, it seems unlikely that he reached Cape Horn or the eponymous Drake Passage because his descriptions do not fit the first and his shipmates denied having seen an open sea. The first report of his discovery of an open channel south of Tierra del Fuego was written after the 1618 publication of the voyage of Willem, Schouten and Jacob Le Maire around Cape Horn in 1616. He pushed onwards in his lone flagship, now renamed the Golden Hind in honor of Sir Christopher Hatton. The Golden Hind sailed north along the Pacific coast of South America, attacking Spanish ports and pillaging towns. Some Spanish ships were captured, and Drake used their more accurate charts. Before reaching the coast of Peru, Drake visited Mocha Island, where he was seriously injured by hostile Mapuche. Later he sacked the port of Valparaiso further north in Chile where he also captured a ship full of Chilean wine. Capture of Spanish treasure ships near Lima Drake captured a Spanish ship laden with 25,000 pesos of Peruvian gold, amounting in value to 37,000 ducats of Spanish money. 
Drake also discovered news of another ship, Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, which was sailing west towards Manila. It would come to be called the Cacafuego. Drake gave chase and eventually captured the treasure ship, which proved his most profitable capture. Aboard Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, Drake found 80 pounds of gold, a golden crucifix, jewels, 13 chests full of royals of plate and 26 tons of silver. Drake was naturally pleased at his good luck in capturing the galleon and he showed it by dining with the captured ship's officers and gentlemen. Passengers. He offloaded his captives a short time later, and gave each one gifts appropriate to their rank, as well as a letter of safe conduct. Coast of California. Nova Albion After looting the Cacafuego, Drake turned north hoping to meet another Spanish treasure ship coming south on its return from Manila to Acapulco. Although he failed to find a treasure ship, Drake reputedly sailed as far north as the 38th parallel, landing on the coast of California on 17 June 1579. He found a good port, landed, repaired and restocked his vessels, then stayed for a time, keeping friendly relations with the coast Miwok natives. He claimed the land in the name of the Holy Trinity for the English crown, called Nova Albion, Latin for New Britain. Assertions that he left some of his men behind as an embryo colony are founded on the reduced number who were with him in the Moluccas. The precise location of the port was carefully guarded to keep it secret from the Spaniards and several of Drake's maps may have been altered to this end. All first-hand records from the voyage, including logs, paintings and charts, were lost when Whitehall Palace burned in 1698. A bronze plaque inscribed with Drake's claim to the new lands, Drake's plate of brass, fitting the description in his account, was discovered in Marin County, California but was later declared a hoax. Now a National Historic Landmark, the officially recognized location of Drake's New Albion is Drake's Bay, California. Across the Pacific and around Africa Drake left the Pacific coast, heading southwest to catch the winds that would carry his ship across the Pacific, and a few months later reached the Moluccas, a group of islands in the western Pacific, in eastern modern-day Indonesia. While there, Golden Hind became caught on a reef and was almost lost. After the sailors waited three days for expedient tides and dumped cargo, they freed the bark. Befriending a sultan king of the Moluccas, Drake and his men became involved in some intrigues with the Portuguese there. He made multiple stops on his way toward the tip of Africa, eventually rounded the Cape of Good Hope, and reached Sierra Leone by the 22nd of July 1580. Returned to Plymouth on the 26th of September, Golden Hind sailed into Plymouth with Drake and 59 remaining crew aboard, along with a rich cargo of spices and captured Spanish treasures. The Queen's half share of the cargo surpassed the rest of the Crown's income for that entire year. Drake was hailed as the first Englishman to circumnavigate the earth. The Queen declared that all written accounts of Drake's voyages were to become the Queen's secrets of the realm, and Drake and the other participants of his voyages on the pain of death sworn to their secrecy, she intended to keep Drake's activities away from the eyes of rival Spain. Drake presented the Queen with a jewel token commemorating the circumnavigation. Taken as a prize off the Pacific coast of Mexico, it was made of enameled gold and bore an African diamond and a ship with an ebony hull. For her part, the Queen gave Drake a jewel with her portrait, an unusual gift to bestow upon a commoner, and one that Drake sported proudly in his 1591 portrait by Marcus Guerrerez now at the National Maritime Museum, Greenwich. On one side is a state portrait of Elizabeth by the miniaturist Nicholas Hilliard, on the other a sardonyx cameo of double portrait busts, a regal woman and an African male. The Drake Jewel, as it is known today, is a rare documented survivor among 16th century jewels. It is conserved at the Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Award of Knighthood Queen Elizabeth awarded Drake a knighthood aboard Golden Hind in Deptford on 4 April 1581, the dubbing being performed by a French diplomat.
Monsieur de Marchaumont, who was negotiating for Elizabeth to marry the King of France's brother, Francis, Duke of Anjou. By getting the French diplomat involved in the knighting, Elizabeth was gaining the implicit political support of the French for Drake's actions. During the Victorian era, in a spirit of nationalism, the story was promoted that Elizabeth I had done the knighting. A ward of arms after receiving his knighthood Drake unilaterally adopted the armorials of the ancient Devon family of Drake of Ash, near Musbury, to whom he claimed a distant but unspecified kinship. These arms were argent, a wyvern wings displayed and tail nowed gules, and the crest, a dexter arm proper grasping a battle axe sable, headed argent. The head of that family, also a distinguished sailor, Sir Bernard Drake, angrily refuted Sir Francis's claimed kinship and his right to bear his family's arms. That dispute led to a box in the rear being given to Sir Francis by Sir Bernard at court, as recorded by John Prince in his Worthies of Devon. Queen Elizabeth, to assuage matters, awarded Sir Francis his own coat of arms, blazoned as follows. Sable a fess wavy between two pole stars, Arctic and Antarctic, Argent, and for his crest, a ship on a globe under rough, held by a cable with a hand out of the clouds, over it this motto, Auxilio Divino, underneath, sic parvus magna, in the rigging whereof is hung up by the heels a wyvern, gules, which was the arms of Sir Bernard Drake. The above is considered by students of heraldry to be an early example of debased arms due to their over-complexity, particularly as regards the crest. The motto, Sic Parvus Magna, translated literally, is, Thus great things from small things. The hand out of the clouds, labelled Auxilio Divino, means, with divine help. The full achievement is depicted in the form of a large coloured plaster over mantle in the Lifetimes Gallery at Buckland Abbey. Nevertheless, Drake continued to quarter his new arms with the Wyvern Gules, the arms adopted by his nephew Sir Francis Drake, first baronet of Buckland, were the arms of Drake of Ash, but the Wyvern without a nowed tail. Political career. In September 1581, Drake became the mayor of Plymouth and was a member of Parliament in 1581 for an unknown constituency, and again in 1584 for Bossiney and Plymouth in 1593. Purchase of Buckland Abbey. In 1580, Drake purchased Buckland Abbey via intermediaries from Sir Richard Grainville, hiding who was actually purchasing the abbey a large manor house near Yelverton in Devon, from Sir Richard. He lived there for 15 years, until his final voyage, and it remained in his family for several generations. Buckland Abbey is now in the care of the National Trust and a number of mementos of his life are displayed there. Great Expedition War had already been declared by Philip II after the Treaty of Nonsuch. So the Queen through Francis Walsingham ordered Sir Francis Drake to lead an expedition to attack the Spanish colonies in a kind of preemptive strike. An expedition left Plymouth in September 1585 with Drake in command of 21 ships with 1,800 soldiers under Christopher Carlyle. He first attacked Vago in Spain and held the place for two weeks ransoming supplies. He then plundered Santiago in the Cape Verde Islands after which the fleet then sailed across the Atlantic, sacked the port of Santo Domingo and captured the city of Cartagena de Indias in present-day Colombia. On 6 June 1586, during the return leg of the voyage, he raided the Spanish fort of San Augustin in Spanish Florida. After the raids he then went on to find Sir Walter Raleigh's settlement much further north at Roanoke which he replenished and also took back with him all of the original colonists before Sir Richard Grainville arrived with supplies and more colonists. He finally reached England on the 22nd of July, when he sailed into Portsmouth, England to a hero's welcome.